Hey, I'll show you all things that I I'm coming to you from my bathroom during my tiling project. I'm sitting here scrubbing away thinking, how is this applicable to, to endo, to improving our outcomes? Well, let me show you. Okay, so I'm sitting here, I did these tiles, and I'm not an expert tiler. And that's okay. Uh, so when I placed the tiles down, the cement underneath the tiles came up through the tiles. And unfortunately, that's not as strong as the material that I'm going to fill these the grout lines with, the cracks. So what do I need to do? I need to go ahead and remove all of this material from each of the cracks. It is, yeah, painful to do. But it is what it is. And I'm sitting here thinking, why am I doing this? Well, I'm trying to improve the outcome of my tiles. So... If this material was left flush, it will wash away. That's the problem. It'll wash away when I when we have showers. We have four kids. Everyone's always showering, it seems. And so what I'm what I need to do is I need to remove it from all sides of the the tile, exactly like removing necrotic material and vital tissue from a root canal space. So that's why I was thinking, like, why am I doing this? Why am I cleaning this so effectively? I'm doing it to improve the outcome. So how can we do that? How can we improve the outcome simply by when we do our root canal therapy? Because that's what we want. We don't want patients to come back in a year saying they have pain. I mean, it happens, but we want to know confidently that we've effectively cleaned and debrided the system. So one way we can do that, and here are some plastic teeth. One way is just practicing. So if you don't have extracted teeth, grab some plastic teeth. These are from uh, dental education laboratories. Practice makes perfect. I have extracted teeth or you don't want to work with extracted teeth. These plastic ones are a decent option too. These are from Dance by Meifler. So what are some other quick ways we can improve our effect, our tech, our outcomes? So we irrigate. So not only do we, so when I'm cleaning this, I do this, I clean it and then I have the shop vac. Take, magically takes the material away. So similarly, when we're doing our root canal therapy, so our files, these are old school pro tapers. Okay. Um, so this is our endodontic file. This is an old, this is like the original nickel titanium file. Uh, I don't use these, but so what we're trying to, what we can do is to make sure we remove all that necrotic and vital material is use a brushing stroke to clean the walls, especially in a necrotic tooth when we need to try to get rid of all the necrotic material. So you can use a brushing technique I wouldn't brush at the apex because that's something you're going to lose. You'll lose your working length. And we'll talk more about that down the road. But you can watch if you place your stopper on. So the stopper at your work at your working length. We'll talk about that as well. Let's pretend in this case it's there. So 18, 19, 20. So roughly 21 millimeters. So I'm going to brush out from the frication, out from the frication, not lots, just a little bit, just kind of scrape the walls. And that it reminds me of what I'm doing here is scraping this material away and I have to scrape it away especially in vital material uh, and in vital tooth to make sure it's cleaned out so here we are scraping I'm just gonna do it because I'm hooked now okay so then I take my vacuum and I remove that material so very similarly in a tooth now what's what's on the, one other way is we irrigate so we use hypochlorite and a really quick tip is you can this is a side ported irrigating needle i think this is mass. liquid exits outside so one way you can make sure because if you place it like this you don't know where you're going how deep into the canal you're going so after i get my working length what i do is i find out i subtract about a millimeter from that working length and i bend my i don't have a measuring stick at home i bend my irrigating needle to approximately one millimeter away from my working length and that way I know that when I sink this, I'm at the proper depth. And it's a really cool, simple little technique to improve safety when you're doing your endodontic therapy, but it also improves, it should, should improve your outcome because now you're irrigating roughly within one or two millimeters away from your working length. Now, how much irrigant do you need? Well, that's up for debate. What concentration do you need? That's up for debate too. And the concentration will depend on if it's a necrotic or vital tooth. So what are the other things that I grabbed from the basement? Another technique to 
to improve our outcome is to make sure you have straight line access. So how can we do that? Well, after you get your access, one really simple technique is to use this end cutting burr. It's called the endo Z burr. There's also one from Cybron called the endo access burr. And this one has a non-cutting tip. So when you run it near high speed, it runs really quick and it's either not even cutting me, but mind you, I can't spin it that fast. Please disregard the utility glove. It's so my hands will dry out. And you place this, and I'll show you in another video. Stay tuned how to use this burr, and it's really effective that once you have your endo access, once you have your access, your number, say, four round burr, pops into the pulp chamber, you use this burr to quickly outline your endo access according to the atomic, atomic variation of your tooth. So that's a high-speed burr. It's pretty, pretty sweet. And what's the last one? Well, pick your poison. I've got, I'm demoing three different types of apex locators. We've got the Denseply Promark. We've got the standard and tried and true Root ZX, and there's the old school one. So they all work, and what we do is we need to learn how to use these properly, so make sure we have a working length. Um, I didn't learn properly till somebody actually taught me. I thought I knew what I was doing, and I'll show you later in a video how to do that. So how does tiling compared to do your root canal therapy? Well, it's making sure that we have the best outcomes for our patients so they're happy and we're happy and we can make endo fun again. So thanks a lot for watching. really appreciate your time. Subscribe or place your comments below if you'd like to see anything else specific about root canals. I'm looking forward to creating a series on making your system more efficient with your dental operatory setup, what to, how to train your dental assistant in terms of endodontics and providing the best care you can with the root canals for your patients. And you know what? Making root canals fun. <laughs> Cheers. So if you made it this far to the outtakes, um, I finally finished cleaning all those grout lines. And let's take a look here. I can tell you for 100%, I am far from being an expert, even intermediate, at laying tile down. I've done this once before. Oh no, this is my first time with these mosaics. But I am an intermediate at cleaning all the grout between all of these wonderful tiles. So, thanks for joining me. And if you have any comments or any questions, actually any points that you want to, any tips, even on tiling, they'd be greatly appreciated. Cheers.